It's a Hilly Bible Time. Good morning. It's Friday morning, the 24th of February. And uh, we are in, look, uh, chapter 22 of uh, Christopher Watkins' Biblical Critical Theory. It's the last days and parallax living. There's a couple of questions at the end of the chapter. Um, Christian living in the last days is variously described in this chapter as living forward, as gerundive, and as eschatological realism. Choose an expression that helps you capture the Bible's vision of now and not yet. Uh, why is it important to work for the shalom of the cultures and cities in which they find themselves? Discuss one example from your own life. Now, um, we looked at a little of this on Monday, and I've had a couple of wild days this week. Um, I was up till 2 a.m. on um, Tuesday night working on the, on the uh, pastor's heart. And then actually I had a big migraine on Wednesday. And so I've, I've been kind of uh, absent from this for a few days. Last time I was with you, I looked at the first bit of uh, The Last Days in Parallax Living, the first bit of chapter 22, um, and uh, just setting up the whole issue of the now and but not yet. Um, he introduces in the next little section of this chapter, this verb, the gerundive. Um, Everything in Christian experience is shot through with the future reality of what that thing will become in the day of the Lord. The future of everything is folded into its present, just like the patient with a terminal and incurable cancer, or conversely, like the convict whose day of release is drawing closer. To borrow a grammatical term, this inflicts the Christian mode of living in the last days as a gerundive. The gerundive is a splendid verb form, sadly lacking in English, but present in Latin. It denotes what is to happen. Um, the most famous example uh, is in the line, Carthage is to be destroyed, where the gerundive is the single word, to be destroyed. Carthage exists today in the mode of to be destroyed. It has destruction written all over it. Um, you can only think of it in terms of its future destruction. It's the gerundive mode of existence. The world today, right now, for the Christian, well, it's to be destroyed, 2 Peter 3. Um, now, uh, he then goes on with a campaign for the Christian gerundive. He, he turns to politics, um, and this forward-living gerundive mode of being in the world has broad implications for Christian attitudes and expectations today. First of all, it leads to what Oliver O'Donovan calls the desacralization of politics by the gospel. Politics for the Christian is now irreducibly gerundive because the historical reality of the ascended king casts an eschatological light of hope over the present age. Um, O'Donovan locates all political life in terms of the already and the not yet, giving an account of secular authority which presumes neither that the Christ event never occurred nor that the sovereignty of Christ is now transparent and uncontested. Um, second, the gerundive stance also provides a context for what author and missiologist Ed Stelzer call, Stetzer calls the rebellion against the rebellion. Um, the counterinsurgency of the city of God against the earthly city, which itself is a rebellion against God's original rule. Um, for Chesterton, this radical revolutionary stance is not without a little irony. The height of orthodoxy to the orthodox there must always be a case for revolution, for in the hearts of men, uh, God is put under the feet of Satan. In the upper world, hell once rebelled against heaven, but in the world, in this world, heaven is rebelling against hell. This is the rebellion of the orthodox, or what John Milbank might call a counter-rebellion. Neither straightforwardly conservative nor simply progressive. Um, now, where he goes next, I'm not sure about. In fact, um, he follows Keller into um, this whole thing on seeking the good of the city. And, um, and, and really, he takes Keller's line completely. Um, I have been persuaded by Phil Colgan's critique of Tim Keller on this issue. And uh, there's an interesting article, if you go to thegotherefore.com, uh, where um, Phil Colgan, well, he, he originally gave the talk at the Nexus conference, um, and he says the primary message of Jeremiah 29 is for us to live in the light of our future hope, to live now in this world as citizens of the next, neither ceasing to do good 
to all those around us, Galatians 6.10, nor becoming so friendly with our world that we find ourselves enemies of God, James 4.4. 4. And he says we should let the New Testament, this is um, Phil Colgan, we should let the New Testament give us the correctives we need. Don't withdraw from the world, but overcome evil with good. Don't hate your enemy, feed him instead. Don't hide away, but love your neighbor in the broadest sense of the world. Don't stand around waiting for Jesus to return while sponging off others, but work hard as if for the Lord. Um, and Colgan says, Perhaps the closest message to Jeremiah 29.7 in the New Testament is the call not to fight the secular government, but to submit and pray for those in authority so that we can quietly get on with living godly lives. Don't withhold your wealth from the world, pay your taxes, live such good lives among the pagans, though they accuse us of doing wrong, they will one day glorify God. Um, and then Colgan finishes by saying, we should let our new covenant situation drive us to see the most fundamental thing that we can do for the welfare of our fallen world is not contribute to its prosperity, but to share the reason for our hope, to offer sinners the salvation we found in Christ Jesus. And so I want to part company with Keller and hence with Watkin um, in this chapter. And um, yeah, let me lead in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that we might be a people who get on with living godly lives, who don't um, withhold our wealth from the world but pay our taxes, that we live good lives among the pagans. We pray that we would be holding out the word of life clearly to our fallen world. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time and look forward to your company Monday morning when we'll look at the next chapter of the last days and give me to Caesar what is Caesar's.